All right, on this seat back, I just want to show you guys, I just glued foam along the edge. There's a lot of ways you can do it. Anything lumpy or not perfect will show up, so there's always that problem. Uh, some guys even sand their foam and shape it. You can do that, too. I, I really don't know how to do that. I've tried playing around with that stuff, but I haven't been able to be successful at it yet, so it's a something you got to master. So anyway... I um, kind of do it this way as a compromise. It, it could work better if you did that, but like I said, it's not my thing yet, so I'll, maybe, I'll probably learn that later on in life, but hopefully I have time to learn more new stuff. I think it's always good to learn more. So anyway, got this thing patterned out right here. I've been doing rough patterns. I'm going to do those off camera. I've got the one for the top made up this is the top piece that goes here but it's just rough i don't have it cut in yet again i gotta make it sew it uh shape it to the right shape and then uh, go ahead and put the welt on it so i've got the back side there's a piece that goes back here basically like this again i don't use the patterns from the existing unless you know, a lot of times the vinyl shrunk and they don't fit right. So I like to redo them. Maybe it takes more time, but I don't know. It just seems to come out better for me. And on the back, you can see there's a door panel piece. I've already got that cut out. Um, and then I got to paint it. It looks like maybe it was matching the shifter and stuff. So I might use the same, say paint, paint it with some primer. Um, that's some, uh, but basically... I'll use, I got a kind of a hybrid primer. It's like an oil base, but it's also water. It's a water base that turns oil when it dries. And you can put automotive paint over that. So I'm going to use that and prime it. I think I've got some out in the primer shed. I'll go look out there and see. And I'll do that with a roller. I'll put the base coat on with a roller and I'll just spray paint over it with some base coat. Maybe put a one coat of clear on it or something. You know, just to kind of make it so it's got some durability I suppose so I've got that already cut the back piece so I'm gonna go ahead and finish cutting in getting the sides um, I think I've got these already cut the sides here and I'll, I'll get all the rough cut in first and then we'll get together once I get all the rough cut in done then we'll start doing some sewing and start shaping it and kind of show you how that works so I just made this exactly to the edge like this. Okay, that's what I did with this. So I just made it exactly like that. And then it's gonna go over the top of this. And on this part, it goes underneath. It rolls all the way up underneath and you pull it down tight. So what that does is it keeps it uh, rolled under there. Then it's got those little things underneath there. So. Anyway, we'll take a look at that, and then I'll bring you back in once we get rolling, and uh, I'll talk to you in a little bit. Now, uh, I'm uh, doing my patterns right now. So I've got the back one. I just did some rough ends. You know, I just cut them to where they fit. Now, this one's got to fold over onto the back uh, like that, and the edge line up it looks like I got it just the right length I thought I had cut it too short but no just right because it's got to be sewn to the panel right along this edge like that so it's got to fold over I'm going to sew it and fold it over gotta figure that out and then what I do is I figure out where I'm going to cut it over here on this end. Then I'll just fold it right on the right on the center mark. And just do the other end. That's how you make patterns. Just it's all folding. Like I said, I'm no expert. I'm just doing this a common sense method. 
And uh, so then I've cut this one out right here. I kind of cut it a little bit short. Uh, so I can, it's gonna be on the seat bottom. So I don't know. I mean, this is going to end up, I think this is going to, oh yeah, this is going to be right here. That's got to go up to where the seam is going to be right there. Might need to make that one a little longer. You need some to go over the end. This is like cut. The other one I cut was this one. So actually, I could make this pattern and then just duplicate it because that has enough room to fold over and hog ring along here. There's a few hog rings that go right, right here. The other part folds over from here and hooks onto those hooks. So yeah, uh, I got to figure this out. So this should have just a little bit of overlap because I'm doing the hidden seam right here. So I think I can do that upside down and make the other side first. So this will be the left side. Go over the edge here, and then uh, yes, my line needs to be down below, down right there. It's kind of hard to think it through and then look at it at the same time. Let me get you guys in frame here. I'm trying to, it's got to be my seam has to be down. Because it's gonna gonna sew right here, right? And this stops right here, and then this end just folds over. So, okay. I'll cut this one out and then this one will be for that side <clears throat> and I'll make a mirror image of it for this side. All right, so I go ahead and check these. And I've sewn them a couple times. I had to move my stitch over. So I, I stitch it right near the end, okay, so that I have room to kind of correct it. Because I know I'm not going to get the exact angle right. So, yeah, then I'll put it back on here and check it. Make sure this thing flows right. 
it doesn't have like a a wrinkle here or up here one of the two and this one's like nice so that's a nice transition there i'm going to check it along the bottom it's lined up here just tape it up in place pin it tape it whatever you can do and then check the flow here again i had to show you here so you can see uh, get this off you can see I stitched it a second time so the first time I stitched it straight second time I stitched it at an angle a little bit to get it to take that wrinkle out so I just looked at it and made sure because it was kind of like if I pulled it straight it was like this okay so I had to bring it down by moving the stitch over a little bit right so it'll go straight because if you have it going down like that and you go put the cover on and it'll have a nice fat wrinkle right there and you, you'll love that. So the other thing I do when it's up there is I know my welt's going to end right around here, right? And then it's going to fade in so it's going to disappear underneath the stitch. So I put a line right here to where I'm going to start sewing the welt in. But then I'm going to leave it an extra inch or so past that so that I can tuck it underneath. That's how I do it. I don't know how anybody else does, but I marked both sides, this side and this side while I had it up there where the welt's gonna disappear, okay? So I'll put the welt on this piece. I can put it on either one. It's easier to put it on a flat one like this. Um, so that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna put it on the flat one here Versus putting it on the cushion is a, or the seat back is a little harder because they're going through foam. Um, the, in the second run, I'll go through the foam. But in the first one, it's easier to put it on straight when I'm doing it this way. And I'll be doing it upside down because I don't have the right, you know. Again, I'll, I don't want to switch welting foot. So I'll be using that is a quarter inch welting foot. And I'm using 3 16 welt. But because I'm going through the material and the welt at the same time, you want to use a bigger welting foot. So normally your welting foot will want to fit on your welt. But when I'm going through, when you add the thickness of the material to it, it makes it a quarter inch instead of three sixteenths. So anyway, that's what I'm using. And so instead of me switching to a three sixteenths welting foot, which takes time, uh, and just sewing putting the welt directly on here I'm going to sew it upside down with the welt on the bottom so that the material you know, the thickness of the material I don't have to switch welting feet the second time to do the welt because the next time I'm going to sew through the material and the welt so I'd rather just do that once instead of doing it twice it comes out a little bit better if you do it the other way but it's okay it'll turn out just fine Right on these, 
so I sewed that on. I'll turn it off camera there. I know I got ahead of you guys. But on these, what I'm going to do is mark where the seam is. I get this thing on here straight where it's going to be. And then if I mark where the seam is, it should come out right, right? So I'm going to mark right there. Put the seam on the seam. Staple it in place probably. And then just sew outside of the staples. That's what I'm thinking. Might be easiest. And it stays in place while I'm working on it. Lining this one up, put that seam right here. For some reason, my seams are in a little different place on each side, but that's weird. I don't know how that can do it that way, but I don't know, my center mark is off. Really strange. Oh, because the center of these things is off on the top. Mm. Something ain't right. I have to do some seam ripping. Hmm. I right, figured this all out. I'll bring you back in. All right, so it just was crooked. So I thought it was, uh, it was, I had it, it just because it's only half of a cover, so it's hard to get it all the way on. I just didn't quite have it all the way on, so we're still good. We're centered down here, centered on our center mark up here. And I got, it, it was just a little, it, when I flipped it over, it moved a little bit. That's why you make center marks. So you got to double check everything. Now I got to figure out where the stitching is supposed to stop here. So the other thing I got to do is find out. So it's about right here. Where the stitching stops here, and then where the stitching stops. Here is pretty close. It's going to be a little bit different, but flip it over. I'll find out where the stitching stops over here again. This one like that. It'll stop right around around here. These marks ought to meet up pretty close. They're not going to be exactly right. Okay. Just staple it on there. And then uh, that's what we'll do. All right, sorry guys, I didn't get to film all this stuff. I'm just uh, getting these little guys ready here. I've only got three of them, so I'm just gonna make it work with three. I'm trying to find another one. I don't, I don't even know if it's even possible, but I'm not gonna bother. I'm just gonna put three. I mean, it's only on the back side of the seat. I'll clean these up and give them a little spray can of some satin black, and then. Uh, Put them all on. Don't want to have to take this cover off again. We'll look at that when I'm done. It seems to fit pretty good. I, it's pretty tight. Of course, when it's tapered like this, it's going to be hard to get these corners to go in. So yeah, I've got I got my work to do. I got to bring this part down, and that's got to hook over those. Ah, wish me luck. I, I don't know how that's going to go. So, anyway. Yeah, and I sewed this one a little bit further over than that one. 
I probably should have sewn it to the edge. I thought, well, I got plenty of room. I didn't. So anyway, kind of baggy right here. Hopefully I'll pull that down and then I'll heat gun it up and get rid of as much of it as I can. Again, it's on the back side of the seat, so anyway. Got two down, one to go here. So I'm just gonna get these ready, prep them up and paint them. I'm gonna poke some holes in there, and then I guess I'll just reach in there, try not to cut myself too bad, and uh, bend the prongs over. I don't know with what, but some it's pretty lightweight metal. Almost probably could do it with my finger. Put a thimble on or something. Who knows? Anyway, it's tough. This back seat's a tricky one. And, uh, it's definitely, uh, so it had four, I guess, one, two, what did they have? I don't know how they went. One, maybe they just kind of went in the middle here. I don't know where they put them, but it's on the, I could get the pattern off the other thing, but I'm just going to go with three, like one, two, three. Who's going to know but you guys? Yeah, well, pretty much everybody, right? <laughs> now everybody's going to know. If I didn't tell you, you wouldn't know. But anyway, I've only got two of them. Maybe three of them. If you guys find one later, it's already too late because uh, I've already sewn this thing in. I'm not putting more holes in it. So anyway, I'll bring you back in in a minute. Well, I've had a whole lot of thinking going on while I'm doing this here. Took like all the brain power I've got. Which ain't much. But anyway, we, uh, we've we got this whole thing here done. Uh, getting all this in there. Uh, getting these things on. And I know it kind of jumped off the end here. It's behind the seat. So, you know, this stuff here just got out of control. I, I knew it was going to happen because that's just the way it is on that kind of a pattern. So I'll use the heat gun and see what comes out of that, right? And whatever doesn't, we'll be just fine. On the, Cause the front of the seat should look good. I haven't looked at it yet, but it seems like everything on the front is feeling pretty nice going around the edges. And that's what I care about the most, so. We'll just go there, that's it. So in the back, I just use these here. Yeah, this seat back's different than all the other ones that I've ever done. Definitely a lot more difficult to do. They did like a hand stitch along here or something. We aren't gonna go there. We don't hand stitch. No, I did some hand stitching already, believe me. This thing got a whole bunch of stuff that I didn't really want to do. That other one didn't poke through, so I had to double hog ring it. I'll do any more, maybe. Should do one up here, but what's it gonna do? Probably nothing. Yeah, I think I'll leave that alone. Do the other side the same. But yeah, the back looks kind of cool. If I can get some of this out, that'll sure be nice. It's gonna be tricky to get out of there. Getting that big of a wrinkle out, it's pretty much impossible. So, some of it's going to be there. And on this, it's just kind of par for the course, really. A lot of blood, sweat, and tears on this here. So, here uh, was not easy.
Load up a hog ring and bring it front. I've been playing with that for a while. Got it to look that good. I don't know if it'll look much better. But if you think about it, when it's like this, and you're looking through the back window, you really can't see those corners as much, other than you'll see kind of this, which will look fine. And then when you see the other side, I haven't done any steaming on this side yet. Just got to do a little bit right there, I see. Uh, but if you can see, I mean, that looks pretty good. It's going to look real nice when it's all in the car. So, yeah. I think the seat back looks pretty good, other than the back, you know. I really didn't think I was going to get this perfect. But, then again, if you look at it, you know, just like that, through the little oval window, it's never really going to be folded down. I don't think I'll be carrying any luggage on there. But yeah, it looks like an original seat. All right, cool. So you can see that transition and how I did the foam on this one. Looks really good too. That's another way. There's tons of different ways. There's guys that can shape the foam. Uh, you can do, you know, get sanders out and grinders. Uh, I might be picking up a saw, a foam saw. I'm gonna get this. I've actually seen a saw that uh, that I think will work really good. It's like a little mini sawzall, and you can use that to cut foam. So, yeah, I was thinking about that. I used to use those electric knives, and I really like the, how they work. The other guys that I knew used them, and they swore by them. They said those are the best thing. But sawzall probably even do just as much. And razor blade. I mean, or a Hacksaw blades, some guys use those. I mean, I've seen all kinds of stuff, but I have to kind of remember all this stuff. I don't, don't do it much, so anyway, it's coming out good. I want to show you guys this. Um, so if I wanted this to come out like better, I was following kind of the existing patterns, which this piece here came all the way over and then went into that. If I wanted to make this look better, if you were doing the same thing, and you wanted this panel to even out through there you know your earlier later cars this was just screwed on i think it was done afterwards um so that's why i've done those and they're much easier to do uh, the way that of course you could just tie into this probably or just you know whatever but on the earlier car where it's sewn in like this what you could do would be pattern this side to this edge right here okay so you could pattern this and that's how i patterned this portion of it right which i probably shouldn't have done it that way um but anyway in hindsight I, I, that's why i got the wrinkles there um, but if i patterned this whole thing one piece um and then i made this whole back just like an insert okay so that the seam for and what I made is made a little extra piece for right here and just sewed it onto this panel. So I'd have a little strip that I had sewed onto this panel. Um, then flip that over and then and then just do one stitch all the way around. So this would be all like one insert and then you have one stitch all the way around straight. It would come out perfect doing that. Yeah. But the way that it was done... See, when they made these things, they... they you know what they did is they they probably sewn them up and took them to Volkswagen and said okay how do you what do you think about these no I want you guys to do it this way this way this way blah blah, blah. and they so they did it that way and then when they finally got done they just take and this Volkswagen accepted it what they would do is go ahead and cut everything apart and then make patterns. So the first time they probably made the seat, they took forever to make it. They probably did it four or five times. Took it to the manufacturer. The manufacturer goes, okay, all right, that works. We accept that one after two or three, four times they didn't make it. And then uh, they'll cut it all at the seams, cut everything at the seams. And then they would have like a pattern guy. All he would do is just, it would take those and probably make hard patterns either out of wood or 
they'd make them out of something so that they could just use them over and over and over in a production thing. And then they would just trace those patterns. So they just take apart everything after they got it right, and cut them all at the seams. So of course it's going to take a lot less time when they do that. And then they would just do it in production. And then your sewing and everything is going to come out right. Uh, when I'm trying to replicate that, uh, you know, what am I going to do? Do it four or five times myself? No, you know. But anyway, this it looks fine like this. This part of it. Well, you can see that looks good the outside edge is super straight um, again the reason that you get some flaws again the reason I'm getting flaws in mine it's not perfect looking like if you look here a little bit of bobble in the corners and stuff like that around there it is a lot of that is because um, I didn't my foam is not really even if you saw the corners uh, if you take more time and you really like get the corners right, the other thing you can do is shape your foam. Those guys that sand it, it's almost an art to do that. And you know, I'll probably do that stuff in the future. But you know, I've always done it this way, and it seems to look good, good enough. You know, that's why I've done it with the folding it over method, and it seems to turn out pretty good. I mean, I've done seats like this a lot, but a lot of guys will take and really shape their foam and they'll. The, the smoother you get that foam, the better the seat looks. So if you want to spend a lot more time on the foam and get it really, really perfect, your seat covers are going to turn out much nicer so you can get them to look a little better. Because when they're on that foam and it rides off the edge a little bit or just doesn't, uh, I don't think that's really a stitching issue, but it could be. But stitching straight, all that stuff all matters and makes a difference. These look fine for me. But these are just things I'm just telling you about that if you wanted to do yours and you wanted to make this come out without those wrinkles in it, all you have to do is take this seam what here would just continue right along here, right? Okay, and then this would be a small piece of vinyl. All right, and you make this whole section as an insert. So you take that whole section and lay it out and then trim it right to the edge, right? Just like we did on the other side. And make that whole section all at once and then sew it in as an insert then after you're all done making that whole insert piece then just start here and sew all the way around and then you're done it come out really nice make sure you're center to center you know start in the center staple it together and uh, come out great so anyway I wouldn't have gotten that in there if I thought I had uh, it's just too hard for me to think about this back and think about think ahead um, but you know now in hindsight I can easily see that be the way to solve the problem and I wouldn't have had that but I don't really care honestly So here's the doorstop for the oval. They don't make these, but I got some of this rubber I had laying around and I used a hole stamp. I got these at Harbor Freight. It's just a punch, a hole punch. I'm just going to cut it around a circle. Well, I kind of cut it in a circle. I know it's not focusing for some reason. There. On a different lens so that's what it looks like just good enough make two of those all right I, I wanted to do this all in one video but I don't know if I'll be able to and maybe I'll just dissect the videos that I have and try and put it in one I'm got parts in the chrome shop so I'm kind of waiting for those but there is a method to the doing these doors hopefully I remember all of it I'm trying to remember it um, but then again, you know, I, I think the last two set of doors, I think, I don't think I assembled them. So, you know, got another guy here helping me out and he did the assembly so fast. So, 
If you see here, these clips, see that direction? You want to start with, with this one in this direction. And I'll show you how that you put these in. Um, this, all this stuff has just a methodology to the putting it together. So you bend it like that and you just put it right in. So you bend it, put it in the hole, and put it in. Because if you go this direction, if you try and go the other direction, it won't work. So you can go from the front to the back or the for back to the front, but the clips have to be installed um, so you can see the direction you're going. So hopefully it comes out in frame. Push it. You just kind of hook it on, bend it out, push it in. Hook it on, bend it out. <laughs> push it in. Anyway, that's the method for doing those. Um, I believe that's the first thing you do. If you put in the outside one first, you can't reach in here to do this. So I had to try and remember this stuff. It's all in order if you do it wrong. If you do these doors out of order, you're gonna really be in for a fight. It, it's just not gonna go together. So then after this last one's in, I need a little bit of a toolage out. There we go. Then you can take some quarter inch tape and mark where your holes are. Um, I usually I'll just drill new ones if you want to mark them. You can mark them on the inside, say where the holes are. Mark them right here with a little piece of tape so you know where they're at. Um, you might want to do that anyway, even if you're not going to try and hit the hole. Uh, your chances of hitting that hole are going to be pretty slim. So, they're really hard to get. So, the next thing is, is put this thing in, which is kind of a pain. If I recall right, hopefully I remember right. I had to do the old phone a friend on this to remember. He said the outside one goes first, and then I... I went, uh, I don't think I can get the inside ones in. I'll do this. Let's see. You gotta get these in before that bar for sure. Let me bring you back in on these. All right, so oh yeah, I was able to get it in. It's not easy, but I found it to be a little bit easier than trying to put this one in after because this rubber piece is in the way and I mean I think it's possible but you just can't get your finger in there to push the clips in so I'm going to say that it's better to put the outside one in after it is a little bit of a fight to get it past this seal for sure and it's these are very tricky doors to put together but you got to put this trim in before you put that other one in. If you put the cross the uh, divider in, take it back out. I mean, you're going to bend your trim trying to get this in. Uh, that's one thing we learned. I think it was, how do you bend it? Like right here or something like that? It's one little spot. You get a little tiny bend in it. And I used to bug my boss, man. If he did them that way, he'd be like, what? So anyway, I'll bring it back in. All right, so on these, if you look here, I use uh, butyl tape, which is this black, it's, almost, it's a caulking that never dries, which is probably one of the best things to use to put these on. Um, I, I didn't used to use this, I used to use that weather stripping adhesive, but if you ever have to take them back out, you'll wish you didn't use that. So I just put the butyl tape on, put them in place. Okay, get this in.
get you guys back here. Then I just stick this in place. Like such. Okay, that's not right. <laughs> Got in the wrong place. Goes on this end. So, anyway. And put it in this way. But you want this to overlap and then cut this edge. I'll show you a little bit later. Alright, so I got my window dividers back from the chrome shop, which obviously they look good. Um, yeah. A few bucks. Really expensive. So remember, I did this one first. Then I did the outside. Then I do a little bit of this. Okay, I go around working my way to the corner. Sometimes I'll get most of the way up. And then what I'll do is I put this in from the bottom up. It's a little tricky to get in there. It takes a lot of time. There's no hurry. And then that way it's between this rubber real nice. You can wiggle it around, move it all the way up, and then slide it down a little bit so that it that rubber fits in there perfectly like that. And then I put this one in. So, And then I'll finish this out too, but... I'll, I'll finish that one out very last. Finish this all out. Um, I still got to get the... I got these made. Let's look at them. Oh, I can't believe they even saved these. Ooh, they look pretty darn good. They did a good job. Those things were just wasted bad. So they did a good job chroming those. It's called Brothers Chrome in Riverside. Did a good job. Not bad. So... I don't know how this thing goes yet. It's like that. Yeah. So anyway. Sometimes I like to have that rivet out. And put a new rivet in. I mean, I think that's how they did it in the factory. Um, they had this already bolted up. Okay, and then ran the rubber around it. And then put the wind wing in after and then put the rivet in. That's how I think they did it. Anyway, I've got to get these still. Need a few more things. I got to get the glass um, rubber piece, and those things are a pain. Maybe we'll get those. I don't know if we'll get them in this video. Got the hood color sanded a bit, you uh, know. Still, still needs to be polished, and there's still some orange peel in it. I don't know how much that I'm going to take out. We shall see. Bring it back in. Let's see if I can do this. All right. Yeah. Not scratching it, right? All right. That one first. <laughs> it's not going to be nice, is it? I guess I'll have to trim on there. 
you have to handle too. You guys can see here, had a little notch in here. It went around, it was flat right at the top end. Sometimes I grind them down. Uh, but this one seems to be okay. This is an original emblem. And see how much it's a little bit flatter than the other ones. And it has a little logo behind here. So yeah, that tells you it's original. There's not very many of those. 54 too. This is the original 54 one. Pretty cool. Yeah. Cool. An original door handle for here. Uh, the chrome shop was not able to save the original lock. He's like, I can't guarantee it, but what happened? Look, this pit went all the way through. And here too, and then he's like, you can see that little stuff there. He says chrome won't stick to that. He knows. The guy's good. He did a great job on the other stuff, and it was pretty reasonable compared to other places. Brothers Chrome in Riverside, if you need anything done. I think he does mail order, too, but he seemed to do a good job, and his prices were, I'd say, 25% less than everybody else. And other places I looked at. And anyway, pretty good job. All right, so these are Wellsburg West. I just bought new metal. My other ones... I had some that I had in the green rag top, so I was going to put new ones, new running board mats on it. So I just put the new running boards on it. Then I bought some new rubber mats for these, for the rat, for the oval. And uh, just squeezing them on there. I mean, there's a better way to do this, but there's a molding that covers this whole thing, so... I'm not worried about if it's got a little squish marks on here. This works. So the rubber on these, uh, even on the rag top, it ended like this. It's supposed to end there, and then you put it on there. So. So it's gonna look like when it's done it'll be squished down here then I gotta poke through the holes there and then put the running board chrome on so yeah with these with these here they only sell this this way and you have to put the rubber on but even look it even walked over a little bit it's a little bit off it's hanging over here so the shape is a little funky on these. Kind of disheartening when you spend that kind of money you spend on that, but it looks really cool. And these are real rubber versus the other ones. And I don't know, are they gonna last longer? I mean, who knows? The other ones, the colored ones last horrible. They didn't last long at all. I don't know, maybe I should hammer these. Uh, I was gonna see if I can get you guys in frame over here. With the vise, make sure it's in frame. Um, let's think about that too. Once you get it enough, uh, squished down enough. And I think, yeah, I'm gonna hammer them like that because it definitely comes out better. Like right here. So we got this on there. It's on there pretty good. All I did is just take this over the other end. And you notice I got a glove on my other hand because I get cut really easy. So I'll just lift that guy over.
All right, so guys, that's uh, it so far. Almost done, getting the assembly done. I got some butyl caulk coming for the, for these, uh, what are they called? Then I can put the glass in, screwing this stuff in. It's a pain. It's just a real slow process, assembling the doors. I got the door handles, I'm going to put those on. We'll be doing that in the next video, so stick around. And then after we're done with that, I think we're going to be putting an engine in it and taking it for a drive. So stick around for that, guys. Come back and talk to you next one. Please like, share, and subscribe.